Hey, Elijah. So um, praise the Lord, you guys. Um, we're going to start and um, uh, we just worship the Lord, praise Him, and uh, just open our hearts. Uh. So Brother Caleb, Brother Caleb going to pray for us. So Brother Caleb, here we go. Um, dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for everybody being here. And uh, I hope that you bless every day that we be, that whenever we walk, whenever we sleep, whenever we something very different than we usually do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Won't you stand with us, church? Sing to the Lord. Lead us, Lord. Here we go. There's a song in my soul, and I feel it stirring in me. This I know for sure that your love, that your love is like a flower, and your mercy never ends. I give my song to you. There's a joy, there's a joy in my soul, and it rises like a morn. I 
There's a hope. There's a hope in my heart. Sing it up. I'm burning bright in the darkness. This I know for sure. That I will look upon your face. Forever dwell in your presence. And all I see to you. Oh, all of your goodness is like a well running over. Let my life be to you a symphony, singing out holy, holy. All my days, all my days, every single breath I be, singing out holy, you are holy. Let my life. Praise the Lord, church. Oh, God is good, church. We love you, Lord. You are our strength. You never grow weary. You lift us up. Help us to surrender our lives to you, Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. will rise. Strength will rise. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. The strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever. Our hope, our strong deliverer. You are, you are the. Up on his life, 
Sing blue eyes as we wait upon the Lord. Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord. Lead us, Lord. Sing blue eyes as we wait upon the Lord. Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. We will wait upon the Lord, our God. You reign forever. Praise the Lord, church. Yeah. Ooh, mahalo, Lord. Thank you for your love. You never grow weary. The defender of the weak. Father, we look at you. We stand in awe of you, Father. You are unshakable. You are the solid rock. We are safe in your hands. Help us to abide in you. Help us to love you. Help us to worship you, Lord to keep our faith in you. Whew. Victory is yours, Father. Yes, sir. Whew. Praise the Lord, church.
Subhanallah. And as I walk through the shadows, your love surrounds me. There's nothing to fear now, for I am safe with you. Yes, we are. Here we go. So when I find I find on my knees with my hands lifted high, oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every year I lay at your feet, I'll sing through the night. Jesus, there's nothing impossible for you. Here we go, church. When all I see are the ashes, you see the beauty. When all I see is a cross, God, you see Lord, huh? we need to remind ourselves that 
We serving God who is almighty, powerful. There is no one like God. So we safe. There's nothing to fear. But we still get afraid. <laughs> but we need to remind ourselves that God is always with us. Never left us. And he gave one plan, or he gave one plan for this world. And for our lives and for our community, our families. He like redeem everything, church. He like use you to shine in the darkest places, God. Mahalo Lord. Mahalo for your light that you shine in our hearts. We love you, Lord. Um, brother body. Good morning, everyone. I just have some announcements. Um, as you know, the holiday seasons are coming, so um, we'd appreciate any of my cutting cards you have. You can bring them in, put them in the offering, and we'll get them. And September is also alabaster month, so here's our alabaster boxes, and you can bring them in, and then we get a new one. And then the giving tree is back there. Um, you can continue to donate, and there should be envelopes and that is specifically for the giving tree. And you can put your donation in there and put it in the offering and we'll get that to the right spot. Um, September 17th, we're having Sam Rothman come and he is performing um, on the piano. That'll be at 6.30 on the 17th. Um, Sundays, we have crossover at 4 p.m. That's high school, college age and above. And today we're going to start watching The Chosen. So we'll watch one episode a week and discuss it afterwards. Wednesday, we have co-ed Bible study starting at 6 p.m., and we also have garden ministry from 4 to 6, and they just meet outside. Friday, we have youth and KP starting at 5, and rides are available, so you can reach out to one of the leaders, and they can get a ride set up. Um, I'm going to pray for worship, or er, offering. Uh, dear Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for the last week that we've had. Uh, please bless the next week, and please uh, take this tithe and offering and use it in ways to serve and bless you. Amen. So you guys can, the offering boards up here, and then even online, too, you can give. Yeah, praise the Lord. <laughs> Welcome. I know Chuck is already thinking of coming back already. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're grateful that you guys joined us this morning. So we're gonna we're gonna um, continue to praise the Lord and um, yeah, worship Him. Here we go.
shout your joy to God. Oh, 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 Lord, thank you so much for giving us. Thank you so much for giving us a song and praise in our hearts. Help us to sing, help us to rejoice always. Ooh, you are so good, Father. Continue to lead us this morning. Open our minds, enlighten our hearts that we may understand your love, that we may understand more of who you are, and that we would be more bold and confident and assured in you. Fill us with your love, Lord, and just melt away every fear in us, that we may go where you want us to go. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Whether you are in person or online, um, just wanted to give a few housekeeping reminders that um, when you use the bathroom, please make sure you wipe things down. We have some wet wipes in there, or there's Lysol. Um, it just keeps one person from having to come in after you and do it for you. So if you don't mind doing that when you use the bathroom, um, masks are, I don't know if we're allowed to say required, but we strongly recommend it indoors. Please wear your mask. I'll be busy. Okay, and I'm going to read our call to worship verse um, from Romans 6, 15 and 16. It says, Well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that, be that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which to me, this verse is talking about using your freedom the right way. Um, I gave a sermon a few months.
months ago about you know using your freedom the way it was intended. You know, um, it's not intended to stomp on people. It's not intended to take advantage of people. But it's there for you to do what God has called you to do, um, to show out, to show His love through the way you treat people, through your actions. And um, I think our freedom is something that uh, that's kind of in debate right now. And um, to me, I think whatever you do, do it with love and care for your neighbors. So that's what that verse means to me. All right, so I invite you to listen to Pastor Mark as he shares the word this morning. And um, have a great rest of your Sunday. So good morning, church. I don't know if you guys can hear me okay. We're having a few dif uh, difficulties with our technology this morning, so kind of bear with us. I know everybody in here can hear okay. I hope everybody online can. <clears throat> they could hear the music. Um, I know we have uh, in person inside here, and we have out under our tent, and we have online, and we're so gr glad that all of you guys have joined us. Um, this morning. Um, I wanted to take just a moment. We're coming into the holidays, and I know they talked about that, but um, Doc Holiday, who's a member online, who's in Cut and Shoot, Texas. Hey, Doc. Hey, Carrie. I know you guys are watching. Um, he's, he gave, every year, Pukanaz gives Christmas baskets, and we try to bless people that could use a blessing, and every year, um, the need grows, and especially in the, in, during these difficult times. And so uh, about two weeks ago, Doc um, sent a gift um, for two Christmas baskets, and he challenged everybody online and um, that can hear this um, to give, to give so that we can give and bless people in our community and on our island um, in, a, in a way that um, let's them know that there is a God. So, and these are all things they need, food and goodies. There are some goodies in there, but um, there's a lot of needy families, and we want to help them as much as we can. So good morning, church. Are you guys awake? Good morning, church. God is good. All the time. So I wanted to take a moment um, and see if there's any testimonies. Um, you know, God wants us to share what he has been doing in our life recently. I don't want ancient testimonies. You guys can write those and put them in a book and get them published. I want to know stuff that he's doing right now in your life or ways you've seen him move. Does anybody have a testimony to share? And it's about the goodness of God. You have to have a, a mic, uh, and J Jamie. Yeah, so we can hear. We want to bless everybody. Okay, um, my husband has been going to the doctors for a really bad infection, and it got really scary, and I had people praying. And for the four days in the beginning, it was doom and gloom, you know. Um, the infection was so bad that it, uh, it literally touched the bone, and so we were worried because of the, the consequences and um, decisions that could have made, you know, a difference in his life. Anyway, so I had a lot of people praying, and so we go in, and we had to go and do a cons consultation with the surgeon, and so the surgeon confirmed that it did, infection did, get to the bone, but it didn't penetrate the bone. And um, with whatever we were doing, it was healing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, 
Um, I thank all the prayer warriors for their goodness and prayers and, and blessings to us. And praise the Lord. God answers prayer. Yes. Anyone else have a testimony this morning? Something that God is currently doing or has a way you've experienced God in this last week? Anybody else? I want to give everybody a chance. God is good. Well, we'll move on. My, uh, my mother was a very wise woman. Yeah, She used to say, um, you can say what you like, but you do what you love. You can say what you like, but you do what you love. It's a very wise saying. Think about that for a minute. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we praise you. Lord, we, uh, we love you so much. We love that you're a loving God, that a God that has a plan for us, a God who thought of everything, who uh, from the beginning of creation knew everything, who reconciled all things through Jesus and made all things new. Lord, we're so grateful for you, that you transcend time, that we can have comfort and peace in that knowledge. Lord, we need you. Help us to remember who you are and who we are to you and how we fit into your great plan. Lord, I just ask that you be with those that aren't here today. I ask that you bless them. I pray a covering over them. Lord, some are maybe ill. Some are traveling. We just ask, Lord, that you be with them. Others might be staying at home because of COVID. Lord, we just ask that you reassure them. Lord, we just pray that you keep everyone safe. Uh, we don't like anyone to fall ill to this disease. Just help us, Lord, uh, to be good, good people, to know that a virus is going to do what a virus is going to do, but we can, we can help by being careful. Lord, bless us. Bless this service. Lord, I just ask that you make these words your words. Uh, Lord, we want um, to follow your Holy Spirit who lives in us. We want to honor Jesus in everything we do. We want to be part of your plan in your heavenly name. Amen. Uh, most of you know <coughs> just that nearly every day, I try to post an encouraging word on Facebook. So I use Facebook or social media for two purposes. One, I like to share pictures of my family and you guys, the youth group. And number two, I like to share an encouraging word. I want the things that I post to honor, you, to honor God. And I want them to impact those that look at my page in a profound way if the Holy Spirit decides that's the way he wants to use my posts. <clears throat> but nearly every day when I make my posts, I receive two kinds of messages from people, from individuals. The first kind are from discouraged and hopeless people, people that are at their wits' end. And I'm talking Christians. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm talking about believers who... Um, love Jesus, but just the events of the world have overwhelmed them. Maybe you guys have been one of those people. Maybe you know um, someone like that. And they thank me for the encouraging word. They thank me for the scripture that I share. And it's not me. It's all God. It's the Holy Spirit. I'm just trying to be faithful. And um, it tells me that there's a lot of hurting people that need to hear an encouraging word and be reminded of who they are and who God is, yeah? And then the second type of message, and it's almost equal, are messages from individuals that are angry, that are frustrated, that are trying to recruit me um, for a cause, yeah? And some of them are very mad, or they're very troubled, and um, their messages are messages of manipulation, to try to shame me to come onto their side, whatever that side is. And I'm talking, it's mostly COVID and the things that are happening in the world, and it's equal on both sides. So I'm not singling out one side versus the other. I'm telling you that um, as a pastor, my job is to bring the good news of the gospel. But 
people that maybe have good intentions, that have been deceived by the enemy, come to me and ask me or demand that I join one side or the other of their cause. And they self-identify as Christians, and you should see some of the stuff they say to me. It's terrible, some of the stuff. And I kid you not. Um, So this morning, uh, actually all week, I have felt that God has given me a message of reminder. A message of reminder. If you take notes, you can write that down. What does that mean, a message of reminder? A reminder of who He is, who God is. He's Creator God. He's Almighty God. He's loving God. He's vengeful God. He's the living God. He's the active God. He is our provider God. He is the Father God. He is a holy God. He is a knowing God. He is an intimate God. He is a jealous God. He is a working God. He is a possessive God. He is our Abba God or our Abba Father. He is the great I Am. And there's many more descriptions of God that if you want to look them up in Scripture, you can. Or you can probably Google it and there'd be a big long list of things that I've left off. But you guys get the picture. This is who God is. Um, nothing can change that. Not, not COVID, not any other situation can change who God is. Whether we believe in Him or whether we don't believe in Him, God is who He is. Amen? And why is it important for us to remember who God is? For our peace of mind. Yeah? For comfort, for peace of heart in the midst of of difficulties and trials. Anybody been through difficulties and trials lately? Yeah, been through a few. I lost my little sister to COVID. Our oldest daughter almost died of COVID. Those are trials that I did not want to go through this year. And I know a lot of you have lost people to COVID. And and that's just one situation. There's still all the rest of life situations. Jamie just talked about her husband who had an an infection. There's all kinds of things. Job loss, uncertainty, evictions, lack of money. You name it, there's all kinds of trials. And during those times of trials, we need to be reminded of who God is. Amen? Why? So that we can face the world and all that's in it, no matter what. So that we can trust. Say trust. Trust. Trust God no matter what. And number two, we need this reminder message so that we can remember who we are. Who are we? What is our identity? Who do we belong to? We belong to Creator God. Amen? If you have a Bible, let's uh, take a look at Hebrews 2, 10 through 3, verse 1. And we have quite a bit of scripture to go through today. So Hebrews 2.10 through 3.1. God, for whom and through, through whom everything was made, chose to bring many children into glory. And it was only right that he should make Jesus, through his suffering, a perfect leader fit to bring them into their salvation. Now, So now Jesus and the ones He makes holy have the same Father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them His brothers and sisters. For He said to God, I will proclaim Your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise You among Your assembled people. He also said, I will put my trust in Him. That is, I am the I and the children God has given me. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could He die. And only by dying could He break the power of the devil, who had the power of death. Only in this way could He set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. 
We also know that the Son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tempted. And so, dear brothers and sisters, now listen to this, who belong to God and are partners with those called to heaven, think carefully about this Jesus whom we declare to be God's messenger and high priest. We belong to God because of what he did through Jesus, because of the gift of salvation, the sacrifice and the blood that was spilled for Jesus. Verse 10, I'm going to read that again. Hebrews 2, verse God, from whom through everything was made, chose to bring many children into glory, and it was only right that he should make Jesus, through his suffering, a perfect leader, fit to bring them into their salvation. All things were made by God. Everything that is wasn't by accident. It was made by God through Christ Jesus. Amen? It was made for God, for his pleasure. We're made for his pleasure. To love, to use, to guide, and to lead. Listen to this, church, because this is a reminder of who we are and what we're about. We were made for his pleasure to love. Love God with our whole heart, body, soul, and mind. Love our neighbor as ourself. To, we were... God created all to use, to guide, and to lead. He wants us to lead others to Him. Amen? That includes you and me, church. All for God. And He chose us, you and me, and any and all who choose to accept His free gift of salvation. He doesn't coerce us. He doesn't force us to accept Him. He draws us in unto Him that we might have life. Through Jesus and his final atoning blood sacrifice. Verse 11. Look at this. We're going to look at a couple verses. So now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same Father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them his brothers and sisters. By accepting and believing in the power of the blood of Jesus, we are adopted into the family of God. Joint heirs, equal heirs with Jesus. And all that God has to offer, we're part of that plan. And that's exciting to me. Amen? Children of the Most High God. And the, our Heavenly Father is our Abba Father. And let's go to 3.1 again. I'm just, I want to reiterate this point. And so, dear brothers and sisters who belong to God and are partners with those called to heaven, we belong to God. For his pleasure to use as he wants to use us. Amen? We belong to God. Who do you belong to, church? God. Let's turn to Ephesians 1, and there's a lot of scripture today. I just kept writing and writing and writing. Ephesians 1, and we're going to take them one verse at a time, verse 5 through 14. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Christ Jesus. This is what he wanted to do. And it gave him great pleasure. God's plan of salvation was set at the beginning of time. Yeah, he isn't a reactive God. You've heard me say that before. God does not react to the events of the world. God had a plan at the beginning of time. He knew everything that would happen. And he restored all things even now, all things are restored because God transcends time. And we can take comfort in that because we know that God has already made a provision for us and He's renewed all things. That's a, that's a promise. We're adopted in, we're made equal with Jesus, through Jesus, and it pleases God to do so. Verse 6, So we praise God for the glorious grace He has poured out on us 
who belong to his dear son. We pr- our reaction to this great gift of salvation and this knowledge that God is a good God, that he has a plan, that he has restored all things and is restoring all things, is should be to praise him. Think about that. To praise God. That should be our reaction. Amen? It's all that we can actually do in this plan other than be available is to praise God through word and action. Praise with grateful hearts out of a a heart of gratitude, an attitude of gratitude, out of awe that this creator God, this great God, loves us uh, so much that he gave Jesus to die for us. That's awesome. Because without that, we're dead. Amen? Amen? We should love. Love, awe, and gratitude should be our enduring attitudes. Does that make sense? It should be what we think about all the time. Instead of allowing the events of the world, the trials that we're going through, to overwhelm us, we should think about how great God is and that He's in control and that He has this no matter what. And that He's invited us. He expects us to be part of this great plan of reconciliation. That He wants to use us to bring the good news of the gospel to others that need Jesus. That should be our mindset. Not, I have to be afraid of COVID. I have to avoid people. I have to march for my rights. I have to demand that I not be mandated to take a vaccine. I have to demand that people take a vaccine. Those are not things of God. Those are not things of God. And I'm not saying there isn't a merit in some of those things. There is. And, and I, I, I'm vaccinated. Our daughter, our youngest daughter is not vaccinated. I love her the same. It's her choice. And I respect that. But I love God more than anything. And I want her to know Jesus and accept Him and focus on the things of God and allow Him to guide us where He'd take us. Does that make sense? So we should love God, have an attitude of gratitude because we live in His glorious grace. That's what Scripture tells us. We don't get what we deserve. What do we deserve? What do we deserve? We deserve death. We're, we're evil. We're sinful. Without Jesus, by ourselves, we're sinful. And who do we belong to? God. And who, who do we serve? We should serve Jesus. We should. It's a question for us, church. Who do we serve? Who are you serving right now? What matters most to you? What are you doing right now? Because we do what we love. Think about that. Enduring gratitude, no matter what happens in our life. Why? Verse 7. He is so rich in kindness and grace that He purchased our freedom with the blood of His Son and forgave our sins. God purchased our debt. He forgave our sins. It cost Him His only Son. It cost His life. His blood had to be shed for us. No other blood could cover the amount of sin that we have in our lives and in our hearts. He made a provision. We couldn't imagine it. Nobody could. He forgave us of our sin. He gave us life. We belong to Him. Remember Hebrews 3.1. We read that. We belong to God. That's what it says in Hebrews. We were slaves to sin prior to that. I want to flip over really quick. And I know this is kind of awkward, but we're going to flip to Romans 6.15-18. through 18. Well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Don't you realize that you became the slave of whatever you chose to obey? Think about that. We become slaves of whatever we choose to obey. We can either obey God to trust Him, to be participants 
in this great gift of salvation, restoration that God has going on in the world, or we can choose to serve whatever interest is in our heart. And how do we know what interest is in our heart? By what we do. Not by what we say, because if we went to every person that proclaimed to be a Christian and said, do you love God with your whole heart? Yes. Are you serving Him with your whole heart? Yes. We can say what we like, but we do what we love. Amen? Does that make sense to you? Let's see. I lost my place. Six, Romans 6. Don't you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Thank God, once you were slaves of sin, but now you wholeheartedly obey this teaching that we have given you. Now you are free from your slavery to sin, and you have become slaves to righteous living. That's pretty plain. We once were sin, uh, slaves to sin, and now we're si- slaves to righteous living. What's righteous living? Does anybody know what... How would you define that if, if another Christian or somebody came up to you and asked, what is righteous living? How would you define that, church? Would you be able to define that? How? Jesus. To love God with your whole heart, body, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. To be willing to lay your life down if that's what God calls us to do. That's righteous living. To live for God and for His plan of reconciliation. That's what righteous living is. We once were slaves to sin, but we should be slaves to God's righteousness. Slaves to Jesus. We belong to Jesus. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? But what does it mean? It means that we better as sons and daughters of God joint heirs in Christ, brothers and sisters with Jesus, bond servants, slaves, be about our Father's business. That's what Scripture tells us, that we're to be about our Father's business. To be about Jesus and God's plan of salvation through Christ. Anything other than that makes us slaves to the wrong thing. Anything other than God's plan. Think about that. Makes us slaves to the wrong thing. Ephesians 1.8 again. Yeah? He has showered us with ki- His kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. How do we know what God's business is? We have His understanding and knowledge. It's a free gift from God. We have access to that. To know what's right and godly and the things that aren't of God. So that we don't get sucked in to things that don't matter to God. Things that are nothing but a wisp. We have no excuse to not live for Him, church. Wisdom and knowledge from God. Isn't that amazing? This is Creator God. We have access to His wisdom and His knowledge. Look at verse 9 in Ephesians now. God has now revealed to us His mysterious plan regarding Christ, a plan to fulfill His own good pleasure. We know His plan of reconciliation because of that knowledge and wisdom. He's given it to us, yeah? How many of you have ever had somebody that wasn't a believer Say, it doesn't make any sense to me that Jesus had to die for sin. Anybody? Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. Why would he have to die and why would his blood cover our sin? Guess what? If you don't have God's wisdom and knowledge, it doesn't make sense. That's why he gives us his wisdom and knowledge so we can understand this powerful gift that he gave us. It's a plan of reconciliation, a mysterious plan. 
because of that knowledge, we have to live for him. Verse 10. And this is the plan. At the right time, he will bring everything together under the, under the authority of Christ. Everything in heaven and on earth. Reconciliation. All things will be made new. What does that tell us? It says to quit holding on to the old. Quit demanding that the old, the things that we're used to, the things that we're accustomed to, the things that we're comfortable with, continue. You guys have heard, heard me say many times, imua keakua, forward with God. God wants us to let go of the things of old and understand that he's reconciling everything to himself and everything will be made new through Jesus Christ. Amen? So don't get distracted. Don't waste effort building things not of God that will not last. That was the theme from last week's sermon. Yeah? To, to do everything in remembrance of what Jesus did and what he's doing in our life. Don't hold on to things that won't last. Focus on God and focus on Jesus. And remember, reconciliation was and is, is God's plan from the very beginning. It isn't something he thought of. It's from the very beginning of creation. You and me and everyone that is and has been and will be were part of God's plan. Did you know that? I'm going to say that again. You and me and everyone that is that has been and that will be were part of his plan there's nothing nothing happens by chance or mistake otherwise we wouldn't be here we wouldn't be if we weren't part of his plan we wouldn't be isn't that crazy to think about now i don't want to get into the theology of free will we i mean we have free will god operates in the midst of that free will and in, because he wants us to love him, he gave us free will. He wants us to love him freely. Uh, but God knows everything because he transcends all time. Yeah? And in spite of evil, have you guys seen evil in the world lately? Yeah. In spite of evil, the enemy and the plans of evil people, God's plan will not be foiled think about that in spite of the enemy and everything he does and the people he uses god's plan is going to come to fruition and it already has and we know that because we have the bible we have the book of revelation yeah it tells us what happens and we can take comfort in that church and we can trust him and we can serve him and him alone why because we're his bond servants and we know his word and we have seen him work in our lives and we know that we can trust him even during the difficult times we're slaves to be used as inter instruments of his reconciliation when we surrender to him now the term slaves is not a popular term in the world yeah it's not nobody wants to be called a slave scripture tells us we're slaves to jesus because of the great gift of salvation, because he purchased us. How can we be part of this plan of reconciliation? How could simple you and me ever be part of God's plan of reconciliation? Because he gave us his wisdom and knowledge. We're relying on his wisdom and his knowledge, not on our own. Yeah? And through his power, living in us in the form of the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 14 and 15, Jesus talks about this. The, the gift of the advocate that, that Jesus is going to abide in the Father. And we're going to abide in Jesus. And the Holy Spirit's going to abide in us. And we're all connected. And God's going to flow through us and guide us and use us to bring life to a world that needs life. Amen? That's a paraphrase of those two chapters. But he wants us to abide in Him, to, to allow ourselves to be slaves to Him, to His wishes and His will, and the Holy Spirit will show us what that means. 
to give us supernatural power to live for Jesus. Because we can't live for Jesus on our own. When the, 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 when the craziness of the world is happening all around us, we need the power of the Holy Spirit in us to stay sane, to stay focused on Him, and to remember that we're His bondservant. Amen? Make no mistake, verse 11 says that He chose us. Yeah? He chose us. He chose you and He chose me. Furthermore, because we are united with, in Christ, we have received an inheritance from God. For He chose us in advance, and He makes everything work out according to His plan. There's no mistake that you belong to Jesus. He chose you. He has a plan for your life. You fit into this plan of reconciliation. Verse 12 and 13 says, For God's purpose was that we Jews, who were the first to trust in Christ, would bring praise and glory to God. And now you Gentiles have also heard the truth and the good news that God saves you. And when you believed in Christ, he identified you as his own by giving you the Holy Spirit, whom he promised long ago. God had everything planned out. He chose us to be part of this. He loves us. He loves you. Jew and Gentile alike. He entrusts us to bring the good news to our family, friends, people in our workplace, our community. And he has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit to empower us, to guide us, to encourage us, and to make us into new creations, to help us to remain as bondservants. His, God's creation, we are his creation, and he has branded us with the Holy Spirit. Think about cattle ranchers or, or horse. There used to be a um, huge problem with horse thievery. Yeah, and it used to be punishable by death. It was such a big problem. Horses were so valuable. And um, the owners of horses started tattooing a serial number on horses um, on their jaw or their uh, gums. Did you guys know that? Anybody know that? They had to do that. They were tattooed. So people would know if they were sold who that horse belonged to. God um, tattoos us. He marks us with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So people can know that we belong to him because we're living for God and we're doing what we love, which is loving God with our whole heart, body, soul, and mind and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Does that make sense to you guys? God marks us. We, he brands us. He loves us. Now, we're not animals to him. We are precious to him. We're so precious to him that he gave us his only begotten son and his Holy Spirit. Verse 14, let's look at that. The Spirit is God's guarantee that he will give us the inheritance he promised and that he has purchased us to be his own people. He did this so that we would praise and glorify him. This is what he wants us to do, to praise and to glorify him. He gave us his Holy Spirit, which if the Spirit is in you, you know. Yeah? You know the Spirit is in you. And that's a promise that he is going to fulfill all of his promises, which is restoration, reconciliation of all things. He's going to give us eternity. Amen? So that we could praise him and glorify him. That's the part we need to remember. Praise and glorify Him. Not so that we can be distracted by things of the world. Distracted by things of man. That we, so that we waste time trying to hold on to the old or the things of the world, or demanding of our rights, our civil rights, our uh, anti-vax rights, or our vax rights, or any of those things that are happening in the world today. That isn't what God wants us to be about as believers. Matter of fact, people that are trying to hold out for those things uh, maybe are panicking because they feel a sense of um, their world slipping away, whatever control they think they have. They need Jesus. 
And when we're glorifying God and praising God and loving God and loving our neighbor, they'll see something different in us than they see in the world. Does that make sense to you? That's what God wants us to be about. God gave us His, our, His Holy Spirit so that we might be able to move through this world with confidence in Him and understanding that even though there's things that might impact us, our future is secure in Him because His Word tells us that. And because of that knowledge and that wisdom that He gave us, we're, we won't become overwhelmed with frustration. We won't be sucked into the nonsense. But instead, we will trust Him in all things and move where His Spirit leads us to move. He wants us to remember, Jesus said, the fields are ripe. He needs us to go out in the community, into the fields, to share the hope and the good news of the gospel with a world that needs hope. And if we become overwhelmed by the world, and if we become sucked into these nonsensical things, people are going to die, and they won't be delivered. <clears throat> We should never be overcome by the world, church. Jesus said in John 16, 31 through 33, Do you finally believe? But the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Trials are going to come, church. Difficulties are going to come. Trust in Jesus. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. We belong to Him. He purchased us. He's not going to leave us. Jesus has overcome the world so that we can overcome the world by the power of His Spirit in us so that we can praise God and glorify Him and be willing participants in His mysterious plan and to receive all things from Him. We should live our life in a way that honors Him in everything that we do and say. By loving God, by trusting God, by saying, God, it's in your hands. I love you with every bit of my being. I don't understand why you're taking me through this i don't understand why you're taking me to this place that i don't want to go i don't understand why you're taking me to these people that i cannot stand they don't deserve salvation that's human perspective and god says no i love you i want you to go and saying okay god i love you i'm gonna go by honoring him in everything he wants us to do. Does that make sense? By praising him, by loving our neighbor, no matter who that is. By remembering who we are in him, sons and daughters bought for a price, slaves to righteousness, bond servants, eager and willing to participate in his great plan, not our plans, his plan. Paul understood that when he wrote in Romans 1 through 7, and trust me, we're getting to the end. He said, and you guys all know who Paul was, yeah? Saul, whose life was transformed by Jesus. He said, this letter is from Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, chosen by God to be an apostle and sent out to preach his good news. God promised this good news long ago through his prophets and the Holy Scriptures the good news is about his son. In his earthly life, he was born into King David's family line, and he was shown to be the son of God when he was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. He is Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ, God has given us the privilege and authority as apostles to tell Gentiles everywhere that God, what God has done for them so that they will believe and obey him, bringing glory to his name. And you are included among those Gentiles who have been called to belong to Jesus Christ. I am writing to all of you in Rome who are loved by God and are called to be his own holy people. 
May God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ give you grace and peace. Paul understood his relationship with God. He understood who Jesus was. He understood what his role was to be a slave, to go wherever Jesus sent him, wherever the Holy Spirit led him, wherever God preordained for him to go. He gave up his life freely to honor God, to trust him no matter what. We're called to be a slave, a bond servant. Complete, live our lives in complete subservience to Jesus. That should be us every day of the week. Amen? Chosen by God to share about Jesus, the Son of God, our Lord. You see the relationship? Jesus, our Lord, us, his slave. Seems kind of harsh. What's our job? To share the good news of the gospel. To believe and obey. To bring glory to his name by everything that we do and say. If we're on a line and we're hurling insults at the other side, maybe foul language, that does not glorify God. It's not of the Holy Spirit. And it's not serving God's plan. It's being a slave to the world. And... We can call ourselves a Christian. We can say we love God. We can say what we like, but we do what we love. Think about that. It's God's plan, not ours. We're called or chosen to belong to Jesus for him to use as he would use us. We're called to be holy by keeping that relationship right between God and us, Jesus and us, and the Holy Spirit in us. By loving God enough to say I trust you even though I can't walk this line on my own. I trust you to guide me and give me the strength to love my neighbor as myself. And that will be the proof that the Spirit is in me and that I'm your servant, that I'm your slave, and that I trust fully in you. God wants us to live our lives for him and to do what he wants us to do, church. What does he want us to do? Matthew 28, 18 through 20 says, Jesus came and told his disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Teach these new disciples to obey all of the commands I have, been, I have given you, which are to love God with our whole heart, body, soul, and mind, and to love your neighbor as yourself. And all the rest of them are to take care of themselves. Be sure of this, I am with you all, servants, given the task to follow him, to trust him, and to go make disciples of all people. That's God's plan for us to be part of this plan of reconciliation. You guys have heard me say that over and over and over. And for years, I've talked about that. To walk the journey that he has for us, to use his wisdom and his knowledge to navigate a troubled world. To not get sucked into worldly things. We've looked at a lot of scripture today, but the theme is the same to trust God, to love God, to surrender to God, to live for God, to be slaves to righteousness, to do the things that God has for us, things that point others to Jesus, not to get caught up in worldly things, not to become distracted, not to make allegiance to things God, understand his plan, and honor him. Surrender to the Holy Spirit in you. Allow him to guide you into this place of love. God has a plan. Live that plan out. I'm going to have the worship team come back up. And God has given us the Holy Spirit, church. Surrender to him.
church. Oh, mahalo, Pastor. Mahalo, Jesus, for your word. And uh, whew, make us like you. Father, make us like Jesus. Father, help us to surrender our lives completely to you. Change our hearts, change our minds so that we can say like brother Paul, I consider everything rubbish compared to knowing Jesus. Ooh. Help us to give our lives in following Jesus. Ooh, help us, Lord. Thank you so much for being with us. Your plan is so good. Your kingdom is so good. Your law is so good. You are so good. Ooh, praise the Lord, church. So we're going to sing Holy Spirit. We just ask the Holy Spirit to just change us and make us more like Jesus. Let us stand. Make this your prayer. Have your way, love. Here we go. There's nothing worth more. That will ever come close Nothing can compare You're our living hope In your presence, Lord I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of love When my heart becomes sweet my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Ooh, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Yeah. Comfort this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts Nothing worth more than I'll ever come close. Nothing can come to your living home. Jesus, I love your presence, Lord. I taste it. I taste it and see of the sweetest of love. Shame is undone. Mahalo, Lord, for your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, yes, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood in this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what I Of your presence, let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Keep it going. Now let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience. 
the glory of your goodness. And let us become a more aware of your presence. And let us experience the glory of your goodness, Lord. Your presence, Lord, your presence. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Praise the Lord, church. Thank you, Lord. All right. Love. Oh, oh. Closing prayer. Thank you. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Um, what a good service. Thank you, Pastor, for the good word and encouragement. Hmm. Sometimes I wake up and I'm, I feel fear in my heart. I'm not quite sure, you know, fear of what, but I feel this fear. And then I think about what God says about fear. And there's a lot of encouragement. He says that the fear of the Lord is clean. The fear is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning of knowledge. That fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. And um, he said, fear not for I'm with you. So I thank God for um, that uh, he gives us a wisdom to discern the difference between fear of man and what can happen on this planet and the fear of how awesome he is. And um, I put my trust in that fear. So I pray, Father God, that you would help each one of us as uh, we walk this life that um, while we're here present on this earth, that you would take away any fears that we have of the things that could happen, the things that have happened, and, um, and you put their, our fear in perspective, that we would fear you, not in a scary way, but in a way of awe, of awe and wonder. So I pray that you would help us as we go out about our life. Um, whatever we do, wherever we go, that we would be bringing you where we are, that our presence would be your presence. So I pray that, um, Lord, you would watch between us as we um, depart one from another and that your presence would ever stronger grow in us and we would um, be built up and we would be a tower of strength to the people around us. So I speak health, healing, goodness, love, and peace to everyone here and everyone listening and to everyone we come in contact with. May Jesus be glorified. Amen. <laughs>